Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I will um, will be starting in a couple of minutes. We just kind of want to make sure that uh, everyone has a chance to uh, get in, get settled, and then we will start. That's great. I can see people trickling in now. Very good. Okay, so let's let's begin. Uh, again, welcome to everyone here today. Thank you for taking the time to join us. On behalf of the Be Well Committee, I'd like to welcome you to our session today, which is tips on improving workplace or workspace ergonomics, which will be presented by our guest speaker, Sonia Boven. Note that this session is being recorded for future viewing. And as well, you will be on mute, but feel free to use the chat for any questions. We will answer questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so just a very, very short intro to Sonia and she can tell you a little bit more about herself. Sonia is a registered physiotherapist with a passion to help everyone get back to doing what they love. And she aims to help her patients feel empowered to take control over their own health and build their confidence to speak up about their own health care needs. So without further ado, please welcome Sonia. Hi, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, lucky for all of you, I can't see how you're all sitting right now, but hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll all have uh, found whether or not your posture or your ergonomics is good or bad and what can be done and changed. Um, but for now, I'll, I'll leave you to it and see, uh, see what you can pick from this, uh, from this presentation. So yeah, so my name is Sonia and I'm a physiotherapist and I practice at two locations. I practice at a clinic in North York, but um, more relevant to you guys, I practice um, in Richmond Hill um, and I focus, I see patients of all varieties, um, but definitely during the pandemic with more people working from home, um, posture and ergonomics has been a huge recurring topic. So for today, I'm gonna to talk about why good posture is important, what good sitting and standing posture entails, what an, an ergonomic workstation looks like. So when it comes to ergonomics, it's both related to the person and to the environment around them. And then I'll give you some tips on how to minimize eye, neck and back strain. And then we'll do some quick stretches at the end that you can do throughout your day, your work day. So I just wanted to give a little brief overview. So with this whole working from home situation, it has become a pandemic within a pandemic. Um, I just found a stat where um, in 2016, only 4% of people were working from home. And then in the past year, about 30%. And I feel like it should be more than that, to be honest. And most of our home offices were not set up to work for these long work hours. Um, there's been changes to how to the postures we're in, how long we're in, the movements we do, our routine at home, um, maybe at the workplace you're moving, you know, from office to office, whereas at home you're just stuck at your desk. And then also you're balancing your responsibilities with home duties and caregiving duties. So all of that has um, caused a, a whole other slew of issues besides the pandemic. So bad posture um, obviously contributes to more pain and soreness. So people will describe having more headaches, neck and back pain, so that's typical, but it can also contribute to being um, more fatigued. Um, it can impact your mood, your focus and concentration. It can even impact your capacity to breathe deeply and your digestion and even your circulation contributing to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. And if you think about it, just the way you sit, if you sit slouched, all of those organs in our trunk get, get squished. And so with that poor posture, that's how it can affect your ability to breathe, your digestion. And then with your neck being 
cramps like that, then it impacts blood flow to the brain that can impact mood um, and focus and concentration and also make you tired because then there's less blood flow to the brain. So there's a lot involved besides getting neck and back pain. So with this picture, what I'm just trying to demonstrate, if you all just grab a finger and just bend it back like that while I talk about this slide. So I want you to bend it back just enough so that you feel a stretch in your finger, but not so much that it's painful. Okay, so then hold it there. So the thing is that bad posture is not that bad. Like I slouch all the time, you know, you know, people slouch all the time, but not everyone gets back pain. The problem is when you're in the position for too long, or if you repeat a bad posture too many times. So the, the, um, the focus should be more on interrupting your bad posture, not the bad posture itself, because we're obviously not all perfect. And so we're obviously going to go in and out of bad posture. So you can probably feel as you're holding your finger down, you feel that stretch in your finger. Then when you let go, you can still feel how your finger feels a little bit funny. So imagine your back sitting in a slouched position with your neck forward for a long period of time. And then when you get out of it, that's the feeling that you're feeling in your finger, but in your neck and your back. So again, it's not about the bad posture itself. It's about interrupting it. So finding ways to get out of it and remembering to do it throughout the day. Okay, so then let's talk about bad posture. So hopefully you guys are not in this posture right now. Uh, so these are some tips to help you figure out whether you're sitting in the right posture. So the first one is making sure that your ears are over your shoulders. You do not want your head to be forward and you want your shoulders to be relaxed. And I'll tell you why you don't want your head to be forward. Our head is actually 10 to 12 pounds. So they say it's about the weight of a bowling ball. And so when you're upright, you know, 10, 12 pounds, that's manageable. And then with every 15 degrees that your head is forward, it actually increases the, the weight of your head. So the sensation of the weight of your head. And so you see this person here who's crouching forward to look at their phone, that's 60 pounds that of perceived weight that they're they're holding up in order to look at their phone. So if you can just sit upright while you're on your phone, you have less weight that you're going to be carrying over your body. Okay, and then to continue on. So from your head, then your shoulders, now your upper back should ideally be supported by the back of a chair. So not hunched forward from the chair. And then your low back position should be neutral, meaning that you're not overly arched and then you're not overly slouched. So here you can see that the person's low back is away from the backrest. And then here you can see how their low back is pushed back into the backrest. So you want that natural curvature that you have from um, the base of your, your spine. And so you can get that by just going back and forth between extremes. So going from a fully slouched position to a fully upright position and then finding that midpoint. And that's, that's probably your neutral position. But like I said, it's not about the posture itself, it's how long you're in it. Okay, then we go further down. So then your bum should be towards the back of the seat. So not slouched forward. Um, your hips should be slightly above your knees so that your hips are not cramped at the front because that can cause a lot of hip issues at the front. And your thighs should generally be parallel to the floor or slightly angled downwards towards the knees. There should be a slight gap between the back of the knees and the seat. It should not be right up against the seat. Um, and then your feet should generally be flat on the floor. So if, um, you know, if your lower legs are too short, you can either bring the chair down or you could bring a foot rest under your feet to lift your feet up onto a surface. And again, all of the support is just so that you're not overworking, you're not overstraining, you're not overstretching muscles. Everything is in its proper position. Now, of course, we can't forget about standing. So with standing, let's start from the top again. You want your chin to be parallel to the floor, so not downwards. 
position, you want your shoulders to be stacked on top of your hips and your ankles. And you generally want equal weight in both feet. So I know like, you know, I tend to kind of like lean on my right hip and lean on my right foot. But then if you do that for too long, again, you can cause hip issues, knee issues, ankle issues on that side. So generally you want equal weight. But obviously that's a little bit awkward and it's hard to stand completely straight all day. So then my alternative is to either use a standing stool or they have like those bum stools that you just lean your bum on um, using some sort of anti-fatigue mat so that you um, your feet and your legs don't have to work as hard to stand. And then having a stool or a foot rest and then alternating which foot goes up on the stool. Because then what that does is that, yes, you are putting more weight on the standing leg, but then by lifting that foot up, you actually reduce the stress in your lower back. So you get the benefit to your lower back, and then you just have to alternate what foot goes up on the step so that you don't overwork the standing leg. So this is a good, um, like if you're going to be standing in one position, like in one spot for a long period of time, um, instead of standing with both feet on the ground, you can have something that you can just elevate your foot on just to reduce the stress in your lower back. Now, in terms of the workstation itself, so you want the top of the monitor at eye level and you want the distance between the eyes and the monitor to be about arm's length. So if you out, if everyone just bring, uh, bring your arms up in front of you right now, your monitor should be at least arm's length away. Um, you want your armrest to be adjustable so that you can achieve 90 degree elbow um, bend here. And then you want minimal bend at the wrist so that you can prevent issues like carpal tunnel. So either you want it to be um, parallel at the same level as your forearms, or you may even want your wrists, your hands and your wrists to be slightly lower. So then that's where the keyboard tray comes in. And then you want a chair with a full backrest, so supporting both your upper, your lower back. Um, and then possibly uh, an adjustable foot rest if you're, if after you've done all of these adjustments and your lower legs are still too short, then you have a foot rest there to support your feet. And then um, a document holder is nice so that you have your documents in front of you to look at instead of constantly having to look down at the table, um, alternating between that and then the screen. So I'll show you what I mean next. So here are some examples of items that I recommended to my patients. So a monitor stand, and if you need to raise the monitor up to eye level, or you can get the ones that adjust and swivel to make it even more um, adjustable to you and your height and your viewing uh, angle. And then this is a full ergonomic work, uh, work chair. So it has adjustable armrests, a supported, supported backrest, and it even has a headrest. And then this is an example of an adjustable foot rest that changes angles going forward and back, which is nice too, because then it's also um, helps with circulation in your ankles because you're pumping them. And it just gives you, again, it gives you an opportunity to be moving your feet and your ankles more instead of staying stationary. And then this is an example of a document holder so that you can keep your eyes um, like fairly at the same level between the document and then the screen, you're not having to constantly, you know, look away at a document and then up at the screen. So here are some tips for neck and back pain. So obviously using a headset if possible for phone calls. When you're using your phone to read or text, trying to keep it at eye level. I know it's kind of awkward to like hold your phone like this, but ideally if you can try to keep it at that angle, because now we know with text neck, the more you lean forward, the more weight your head um, is uh, using a lumbar support. So, you know, people think like, oh, if I have really good posture, um, that's going to help me. But if you're actively holding yourself up, then you're overworking and you're overstraining your back muscles. So you actually want to passively sit back in your chair. So if you have um, lumbar support to give you that natural curvature in your back, then you could just sit back and relax and then the muscles in your back don't have to work as hard. Um, don't keep anything in your back pocket, especially if it's just one pocket. So that's especially with men who keep their wallets in their back pocket, because I've seen a lot of issues where um, when, um, 
men have done that in one side and they kept sitting on it, you can actually develop, you know, a asymmetry in your pelvis and cause issues like sciatica on that side or something called piriformis syndrome, where you pinch the nerve that goes through your bum muscles because of the pressure against the wallet. And um, anything that you ex access regularly, you wanna keep it close to you at your desk. You don't wanna have to constantly be reaching away up and down for it. And then the biggest tip I have is to interrupt your posture regularly. And I say every 15 minutes. So if there's anything that you take away from this, it's that. And if you have to put a timer on your phone, if you have to put a reminder, if you have to put a post-it note on your monitor, um, I have a patient who has a program on her computer that will shut off the screen every 15 minutes to force her to take a break for five minutes and then it turns back on again. Um, so whatever it is that you have to do, just do it. And then of course your eyes. So not only are you sitting in one spot for so long, but then you're staring at the screen for so long. And this is a huge issue that I've encountered with my patients in the past year. And especially in my patients who've had a history of eye problems, maybe concussions, um, anything like that, they've, they've experienced more eye strain. So like I mentioned it before, you want the top of the monitor to be at eye level, maybe tilt the monitor upwards towards you so that your eyes are, um, um, in the line of sight of the center of the monitor. Perhaps you want a larger monitor so that you don't have to strain your eyes trying to see what's on the screen. But then if you can't do that, then you want to change the font size, perhaps the contrast to make it either um, easier for you to see or maybe less straining because sometimes um, less contrast makes it a little bit easier on the eyes and then maybe reducing the brightness. There's also a lot of programs you can use on your um, computer and laptop, like Flux, True Tone, um, Night Shift, that kind of make the screen a little bit more orange tinge, which makes it easier on the eyes because normally the light that comes through the screen is that bright blue light that is quite straining. Um, and then if you can't change the orange, like the lighting of the screen so that it's more of an orange tinge, then you can wear blue light blocking glasses to again, minimize that strain. Um, the, a palm, the palming technique is something that I teach my patients. So um, what you can do to relax your eyes from having to stare at a screen for so long is to rub your hands together to warm them up. You close your eyes, you cup your palms, and then you cover both of your eyes so that it's pitch black. And it just helps to relax the optic nerve because that's what you're using all day to process visual information. And so you can kind of stay in that position for as long as you need to until your visual symptoms and your eye strain gets better. And then again, my general rule is the 20-20-20 rule. So you wanna look at an object that's 20 feet away for 20 seconds every 20 minutes. And so, you know, normally when you're in the, um, in the office, you would kind of take breaks from your screen, you know, walking to the water cooler, to someone else's office, you know, going back and forth in the office. So you, you do get the opportunity to look at a further distance. But now that you don't have that opportunity and you're always looking at your screen, um, this, this is an important rule to remember. Okay, so then here's our stretching break. So I have um, like a couple stretches that I frequently prescribe to uh, my patients who have issues related to posture at their desk. And these are really, really easy to do. And I recommend you do them frequently throughout the day. Don't wait until you're sore to do them, you know, do them proactively to prevent yourself from getting sore. So the first one here is called chin tucks. So you start with your chin parallel to the floor and then you tuck your chin back as if you're making a double chin while keeping your chin parallel to the floor. So it, it doesn't look great, you know, the double chin, but the more double chin you have, the better. So you bring your chin back, then you can use your finger to add a little bit of stretch at the end by pushing your chin further back. So don't force the movement. So if you feel any pain, then that means you've gone too far. You want to, you want to see how, how far you can go in and out. And then perhaps over time, you'll get more movement. So you can do 10 repetitions of that three to four times a day or even more. 
And yes, the key here is to keep your chin parallel to the floor. Then you want to add even more of a tuck because we're always or often we're in that forward head position. Our necks are often arched in the back. So we need to counteract that arch. So that's where these flexions come in. So after you do your double chin, right, that, that really ugly double chin, then you bring your chin to your throat to open up the space in the back of your neck. And then you can use your finger again to add a little bit of pressure at the end to get more of a stretch. So again, don't force the movement. You're going back into a double chin and then down to your throat until you feel a gentle stretch in the back of your neck. And then the next one is shoulder retractions. So, you know, we're often rounded forward. So we wanna open up our chest. So with this one, you're gonna let your shoulders drop and then you're going to pull your shoulder blades back towards each other. I, I usually use the cue. Think about tucking your shoulder blades back into your back pocket. Your shoulder blades are going back and down into your back pocket. But I don't want you to excessively squeeze your shoulder blades back because then that can cause a whole other slew of issues with, with the tightness of these muscles. You want it to be just enough that you feel like you're opening up your chest. And then, oh, this is a great one. So this is just a, a nice way to kind of get your arms out from, from being in, you know, typing on your keyboard all day. We want to open up your arms. So clasp your hands together. Open up your palms in front of you, drop your shoulders, and then reach overhead. Hold for a couple seconds, open out, and then do it again. So clasp your hands together, open up your palms, reach forward and up, and then down. Okay. And then pelvic tilt. So this is what I was saying before about alternating between going from a slouch position to an, ex to an arched position. So you're with your feet flat on the floor and your hands on your hips, you're just gonna rock your pelvis back and forth. So imagine your pelvis is like a boat and it's rocking back and forth. And this is just a great way to get movement in your lower back so that it doesn't feel stagnant and stiff during the day. You can even do this while you're typing. It's such a small, small movement that it doesn't require much effort. And then the last one is for standing. So obviously, again, we're always forward, hunched forward, whether we're sitting, whether we're standing. So we want to counteract that. So you stand up, you place your hands on your bum, and then keeping your knees straight, you bend back, looking up towards the ceiling. So you don't wanna force the movement. You may feel a little dizzy or lightheaded as you do this, so just be careful. Um, and then just slowly going back and forth. And obviously with all of these stretches, you know, the caveat is that if you have any pre-existing neck or back issues, make sure that you clear, um, you clear this with your doctor or any type of therapist that you're working with, but otherwise they're all generally safe to be performed by everyone. So remember, my biggest takeaway is that it's not about the posture itself. You know, we all have bad posture and that's okay. It's about how long you're holding the posture for. So make sure you're moving frequently. So even if it means that you're sitting like this when the camera is not on, but you're sitting like this when the camera is on, that's okay. Because it means that you're constantly changing position. Okay. So thank you so much for listening to me today. And I hope you all got some, something out of this presentation. And I would love to answer any questions if there are any. Tanya, that was, <clears throat> that was really great. So I don't know about everyone else, but I was doing all the, I was doing all the exercises. I stood up, I did the back stretch, I checked my posture and, and it's really, and it's, and it's interesting, it's really interesting to have, um, I guess, like a guided, you know, someone to, to guide that to you. And I also learned you know, new things that I, you know, I wasn't aware of. So for example, the, like the palming technique, which I think is mm -hmm. such a great tip. And I did that as well. And it was like, oh, you know, this is, this is, this is really great. So even if all of us learn something different and apply that um, to our regular work life, 
I, I think that's awesome. Um, and I also I also want to comment that the the bowling ball, so with the head of your bowling ball, which which I kind of knew because I, I do um, chiropractic sessions as well. But but when I first found out and just looking at your chart there, so I think it was 60 pounds that you said from mm -hmm. from looking down at your phone, which mm -hmm. I know we all do all the time. And that yes. is such a big number when you think of that 60 pounds on this, on, on you know, on your little neck. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, and I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably, you know, get this, this, this uh, graphic here and just put it somewhere right in front of me. So it's always top of mind, right? Because mm -hmm. I absolutely like, that's just a fascinating fact for, for yeah. myself. And I can definitely provide my presentation to you guys so that you can all have something tangible to have in front of you so that when you, you know, review your, your, your workstation later on, you can see like, oh, check, you know, I've done this ABC, but maybe I need to modify DEF, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll mm -hmm. definitely provide my, my presentation to you guys. There is a question here, um, and it's basically, what are your thoughts on vertical ergonomic, on a vertical ergonomic mouse? Um, Sorry, what kind of vertical? Vertical ergonomic, which I, I've never even oh, heard of that as I well. Perhaps can the, uh, can the person describe it a bit more? The vertical ergonomic mouse. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either of anyone uh, in the group knows what that is but perhaps we can look at it after yeah, me, uh, and yep. yeah and then uh and then share and then share that let me i'm quickly looking it up on my phone right now actually let's see what it is oh i see okay so basically the it allows you so your hand is not like this it allows your hand to be sideways and to um kind of guide the mouse in that direction so it really just depends on comfort, I believe, when it comes to that then. Because I, in the end, I think what's most important is that your wrist is not overly extended, right? No matter what, like whether it's like this, you don't want your wrist to be like this. So if you're going to be vertical, you just don't want your wrist to be like that. So I think that, um, I think that it, it could be appropriate if that makes you feel more comfortable. You just have to be mindful of your wrist position. All right. Oh, that's a that's a good question. I wasn't even aware of that too. So, mm -hmm. okay. Were there um, any other comments? So yeah. So just lots of thank yous from from everyone, and uh, that's great. So like I said, or actually, what Song said, we will share. First of all, we'll share the recording. So that those who um, missed this very informative presentation will have the chance to view it, and we will also share the deck as well because, as I said, there's just lots of great, uh, great, simple, easy tips. And uh, you know, thank you again, Sonia. It was uh, we definitely appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your busy day to to do this for us. Of course, thank you so much for having me again. Okay, and let me just. Okay, that's good. All right, everyone, thank you. And uh, we will see you soon at our next uh, Be Well session. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.